Hey there, geometry enthusiasts, Root Beer here, and I'm going to sort of follow up on the last hyperbolic geometry video we did. Uh, I created a tool where we reflect uh, from a point that's uh, inside the circle to outside the circle. We create that reflection. It's sort of our little mini-series on reflection in hyperbolic geometry. And now we're going to reflect a point that's outside the circle to inside the circle. Okay, so we need our, our hyperbolic circle. And we'll have another point outside. I'm going to again make him green so it's easy when I'm making the tool to distinguish between what points are what. And now we want to reflect to inside the circle. Well, how did we do that in Euclidean geometry? It's going to be the same sort of thing, just with a hyperbolic straight edge and a hyperbolic compass. And what did we do? Well, we sort of needed some points of tangency and things like that. That was, that was the general idea. So we reversed the construction. It actually turned out to go a little smoother than that. But uh, nothing we particularly needed to worry about right now. So we'll just pare down the construction a little bit. We'll, we'll create these intersection points. Now we can get rid of the big circle because there's going to be some more lines that we want to make. So these points, they're not necessarily the points of tangency, but they are going to intersect with our circle, at least I hope they intersect with our circle. Uh, we saw in the last video that our tangent lines didn't actually intersect our given line. They turned out to be uh, uh, parallel, and that was that was actually kind of interesting. But uh, these guys appear, appear to uh, intersect exactly as I want. Okay. And now we uh, we just need to crisscross these guys. And because, we, because of the way we've constructed these chords and these points, when we crisscross, that will lie on uh, the line between the center of our circle and our given outside point, and that will be the inside point we so desire. Okay, so now we can just hide all our work, make it look very nice and fancy, and we can create a little uh, tool here. So again, it keeps wanting me to use the hidden center of the circle, but all we care about is the disk, so we're just going to work with the disk here. Okay. Uh, so A is the center of the, the hyperbolic circle, B is a point on it, C is our, our point outside the circle, and D, uh, our, our disk is the hyperbolic environment, and we want out this point here. So that's uh, reflect to inside the circle. And there we go, a uh, very similar looking icon. It's all about where the blue dot is, although I guess it should be a forest green dot, but don't worry about it. All right, now I'm going to tempt fate here. I'm going to use our, uh, oops, uh, got to move him, move him down a bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show that these guys really are inverse points of one another. So our, our black dot is the inverse point of, of our forest green dot here. And now, let's try and reflect. So we'll distinguish our circle, distinguish a point inside the circle. So there's the reflected point there. And if I move these guys together, they really are reflections of one another using the same sort of inversion that we had uh, in Euclidean space, and the same sort of inversion that we actually used to uh, create our hyperbolic lines and our hyperbolic circles. So you can see GeoGebra is again being a little temperamental there, but uh, I don't think it's the circular arc tool. It might be that the tangents just aren't intersecting uh, the diameter through this point. Well, there we go. We got uh, we have our nice reflections. So we, we sort of created two, uh, two different tools that are symmetric in a certain sense. I like that. So uh, for more uh, hyperbolic geometry, more hyperbolic straight edge and compass constructions, I'll see you guys in the next video.